So today, um, um, oh, before going into that, I, I just want to take this opportunity to welcome each one of you, and uh, once again, um, once again, congratulate every father, every father, the physical fathers, the spiritual fathers, and, and, and the blessing that you are, um, the way God has has been using you to father people, and every time I read. So many guardians, but there are less fathers. And uh, how much we need fathers in our life, not only for the church life, but outside in the world. Uh, people, people are seeking, people need fathers, and uh, and so it's, it's such a privilege to be able to understand what fatherhood is directly from Heavenly Father, and uh, how good it. Today, um, when, when I was preparing and because we are studying the life of uh, Abraham and understanding the faith, how God taught Abraham faith, and uh, and last Sunday we, we started this part of worship. Uh, so we will we will break that and we'll get to that part next Sunday. But today being the Father's Day, and when I got to, although I wasn't allowed to know what all things were going to happen. Uh, much, but I just knew that uh, there were lots of things that happened, and so I thought, let's go with with the topic, and uh, uh, let's let's just uh, meditate on the word on the topic of fathers, fathers' love, and so I'm going to speak about father's heart of Abraham, and I just want to bring some of the some of the. Um, some of the elements of his personality as a father, and uh, the more I was, I was trying to dig deep in to see the father heart of Abraham. The, the more I was getting blessed, and I was thinking, "Yes, Lord, uh, I would like to be such a father." Um, so, so I, I, I'm going to request Sophia if she can put one verse for us. This is from Genesis chapter 18, verse 19. Genesis. Chapter Sodom and Gomorrah. He stops there on the way and he starts thinking and uh, God is revealing what is he thinking. So does this make you feel a little bit excited that we are able to read what God thinks sometimes? You know, uh, for, for, for me, I, I, really, I really love to learn my God. I really love to know my God better, because I have come to this uh, conclusion that the more I know Him, the more I love Him. 
the more I know my God, the more I fall in love with Him. I just love Him. And when I read this verse, I realize that this is what my God is thinking. And, and it just makes me feel so awesome that I can, I can read, I can know what my God thinks, how my God thinks. Yes, I can see His ways. Yes, I can see His miracles. Yes, I can see His commandments. Yes, I can read all these things. But hey, coming to that personal relationship, I would really like to know what He thinks. What, what does He desire? What, how is His thinking process? When He looks at something, how does He start thinking about it? And, and, and that, just, that just makes me feel privileged that I can know what my God thinks sometimes. And, and, uh, and so here is one such occasion where we read, where God is openly telling us what was he thinking, what was in his heart. And this was what he is thinking, he is saying to himself about Abraham. And uh, he begins by saying that, how can, sh sh shall I, should I, should I hide anything from Abraham now? Because I know Abraham is going to be someone to whom a big nation is going to come in the next few years, to whom families in the world will be blessed. We will be blessing to the families and to whom a big nation is coming up. And then he goes on to add this, for I know, so he's talking, he's talking about Abraham now, for I have known, so I, I, I'm not trying to uh, go deep into English, but this is what I think. God is saying, I have known him. Whenever I read that part, believe me, I think about myself. God, if you talk to your angels, how would you say, what would you say about me that I have known Avish in such and such, and such way? What would be that? Or that just something that keeps, keeps me feeling excited? Because God knows each one of us. He just not is interested in blessing us. He's just not interested in taking care of us. He's not just not interested in uh, leading us. But you know what? He is interest he is also interested in knowing us. So that every time we take decisions, every time we speak, every time we have an approach towards a given situation. He is watching keenly. He watches us keenly and he, he knows us in and out. And that's what I read. God speaking about Abraham that I have known him. He is saying I have known him on the basis of what he has done before. The decisions, the actions of Abraham, he is referring to them and he is saying, on the basis of that, I have known him. So how did God see Abraham? What did God, God see in Abraham? What were the reasons why God wanted to have friendship with Abraham? What was the reason why God wanted Abraham to be used to make such big nation? Why it was Abraham chosen. Why, why was God so interested about Abraham? What was the main ingredient of his personality which attracted God so much? What was there in Abraham? And, and this is what he confesses. And he says, For I have known him in order that he may command his children and his household, so both, his own children and his household, he would command. When I read the word command, I see an intentional action. Am I with you? I see an intentional action. So Abraham would get certain things done intentionally. It wasn't an option for his children and his household, but that was something he was doing intentionally. That was Abraham. And that is something God is mentioning about Abraham because Abraham is someone who would do intentionally something. He would not, well, we'll come to that later, but 
Let's keep this in mind that he is doing, he is speaking that Abraham is someone who would do something intentionally. Therefore, he, if required, he will command. When that word command comes, there is an order, there is an expectation, and there is an expectation that you are expected to do. If you are not doing, I will ensure that you do. Do you get that? If you are not doing, I will ensure that you do, because that's my command. When you say command, there is an intention, there is an expectation, there is an effort to see that that is done. Well, let's see what, what is he commanding them for. So, may command his children and his household after him that they keep the way of the Lord. This is Abraham's personality. Abraham's one ingredient that was so attractive for God one thing that made God have friendship with Abraham, one thing that God just couldn't go to Sodom without revealing his thoughts to him, without revealing his plans to him, without giving a revelation, if you want to use the spiritual word these days, we, we speak so much about revelation. God wanted to share that revelation to Abraham because of who? Abraham was. And what was that most attractive part of his personality? His most attractive part was that he would ensure, he would command and he would expect and he would put all efforts and he would ensure that his children and his entire household will keep the way of the Lord. That was the first thing. Will keep the way of the Lord. To do, what is, what is to keep the way of the Lord? To do righteousness and justice. That the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has spoken to him. So God had spoken something to Abraham. Benjamin, would you mind please stand up here? So God has given a promise to Abraham. God has said some promises, a covenant to Abraham. But with that covenant with that promise he has given some conditions that if you do or live a life in such and such condition I will see that you are blessed every promise comes true and what was that what was that condition the condition was that he will ensure that he leaves a godly life and ensures that next generation leaves a godly life that was the condition given to Abraham now what is Abraham's personality here now what is Abraham's personality? Abraham's personality is such to see God's plans and purposes or to see God's plans and purposes fulfilled he will go to any extent because he was concerned about the will of the Father. He was serious about the will of the Father. Does that sound something like Jesus was concerned about not my will but your will be done so was Abraham that I want to see my heavenly father's will comes true and whatever is to be done for that whatever is to be sacrificed for that whatever way I have to live for his will to come true he was strong enough to see that is done and the only thing that he was expected to do was he lives a godly life and he ensures that next generations lives godly life. And that's what God is seeing in him. Man, when I have given this promise to him, when I've given this covenant to him, I've given one expectation from him. I've just shared one expectation from him. And he is such a committed guy. He loves me so much that he will ensure I've known him. I have known him that he is someone who will ensure that all those conditions are fulfilled. I have seen him that he will ensure that his children and his household will follow God. Will follow God. Now, what amazes me is God is speaking about Abraham even before the birth of Isaac. He is talking about two categories, children and household. 
So Abraham is teaching the way of the Lord to his children and to his household. Hold on. This conversation is going on even before Isaac was born. So what children? Because he is using the, the tense that is used here. There are some English teachers here. And there are, there are a few other English teachers here. I know this, this tense, I have known him, means I have already seen him. I have already seen and I am seeing that. So it was there and it is there and probably it will be there. I have known him. But hold on, Lord, he is not father. Isaac is yet to be born. Okay, Ishmael is also yet to be born. So, so who are you talking about then? Who has he shown his fatherhood? Who has he helped to walk in your way? Whom he is mentoring that they will follow your righteousness and justice? Mm. My dear brothers and sisters, when we parent, when we are speaking about Father's Day, when, when we father our own biological children, Obviously, that is expected. Obviously, undoubtedly, it is expected that we will, we will father, we will parent our biological children. True, absolutely true. But there is something above that that God is talking about. There is something above that that God is talking about. So let me bring before you the, the children whom Abraham is fathering or he is parenting. Shall we see Genesis chapter 24, verse 2, please? Genesis chapter 24, verse 2. That's very big, so yeah, thank you so much. So Abraham said to the oldest servant of his house, who ruled over all that he had, please put your hand under my thigh. Now what is this verse referring to? This verse is referring to the oldest servant whom God had asked to go and seek wife for Isaac. That's when he had asked him to promise that he will get wife for Isaac, not from Canaanites, but he will go back to his people and get a girl, seek, seek a wife for his son Isaac. And who was this oldest, oldest servant? This oldest servant was no one else but Eliezer. If you see chapter 15, verse 2, let's see chapter 15, verse 2, Genesis 15, 2. <clears throat> when God is speaking to Abraham, that Abraham, I will make big nation from you. You will be father of millions. <laughs> Abraham responds to him, says, but Abraham said, Lord God, what will you give me seeing I go childless and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus? You know, dear brothers and sisters, Eliezer was just a servant in his household. But he loved this boy so much that till the time Isaac was born, he was well prepared that he will make him heir and he will give him all property once he died because he loved him so much. He parented him. He, he was not the biological father of Eliezer. No. No, but he, he loved him and he took care of him and he parented him like a father to such an extent that he desired to give everything to him because he did not have any biological son. And he was happy doing that. Because that was his way of living. That was Abraham. That was the personality that we are talking about. He was not a person who was seeking that if I have my biological children, only then I will show my love. But he was someone about, about who would be loving anyone and everyone who would be in his household. To such an extent that he will give everything to him or her. 
That's the love that probably we need to see in our own lives. We, the people who are the church people, we, the people who are the children of God, we, the people who, who knows the Father heart of God, probably we need to develop this heart that was in Abraham because this was the heart that Abraham had which made God stop and speak to him as a friend. If you and I wish that I would like to have revelations of God, if you and I have a prayer that I would like to know what God is thinking about this time, what God is going to do in my country, what God is going to do in my family, if you and I really wish to know that, then we need to develop that love for the people whom God has given us around us, even if they are not our biological children. And how good it would be if we can start here. If we can start here, if we can model here, if we can experiment here, if we can, if we can keep doing here, naturally you will extend it to your workplace. You will extend it to your neighbors. You will extend it to the society at large. Let us begin over here. Let us start loving each other, especially the young ones that God has given in our household. Let us love them by giving everything to them. Abraham was a rich man. Jews even today, they speak about Abraham with pride because he was the richest man of that time period. And still he was ready to give anything and everything to Eliezer, to his child, who was not his biological son. My dear brothers and sisters, we should be prepared. We should develop that gesture of love in us. I do not know how that can be prepared, how that can be developed. I just know that I need to be ready for that. That I would like to love every child that comes into my life in this congregation. I'm going to love him or her the way I love my own biological children. Because I see that in Abraham's life. I see that. And I cannot be only the seer and the listener of the word. I want, to, I want to be the doer of the word. I really wish that God will stop and turn around and say, You know what, Abish? In coming days, this is what I'm going to do in Auckland. You know what, Abish? This is what I'm going to do in South Island in coming days. You know what, Abish? This is what is coming in Wanderley. When will he say that? When he sees this love for the children, for my next generation. When he sees that, he doesn't say that Abraham was someone different, someone doing all of the things. The one thing that attracted God towards Abraham was his fatherly heart, who would love his children. I don't want to shy away from that part. I really wish to know God. I really wish to understand the word of God. I really wish to know what my father, the creator, thinks. And I can get that. I can surely get that. If Abraham could get that, I can get that. What a, what a, what a privilege it is that we are told what made God stop for Abraham. And I'm sure the intention was so that you and I can learn. You. And I can learn. Loving Eliezer. Loving Eliezer in our life. If you see Eliezer around you, don't <laughs> miss the love the one your brothers and sisters. Because when we go to heaven and we will be standing in front of the Father, He will be a proud Father that you and I have been like Father, like Son. Let me bring your attention to another personality. If you mind. Genesis chapter 11. Let's see. 27 and 28. Genesis chapter 11. 27 and 28, please. This is the genealogy of Terah. You know, Sophia, when you put this on the screen, I just don't have to use this instrument. <laughs> <laughs> this is the genealogy of Terah. Terah begot Abraham, so Terah was the father of Abraham, and Abraham's brothers, Nahor and Haran. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Nahor and Haran. And Haran begot 
law. And Haran died before his father Terah in his native land in Ur of Chaldeans. And so Lot became fatherless. We get no details about his mother. I do not know whether he was an orphan, but for sure he was fatherless. His father died. And I'm so sure each one of us know that when Lot's father Haran died, who became Lot's father then? A man. Because thereafter we read Lot was always with a man. Do you remember now what God was trying to say? I have known Abraham that he will ensure and command and ensure that his children and household look at his father's heart. The moment he saw that his nephew has become fatherless, he adopted him. He made him part of his life. And Loth was always with him till the time there came a situation when he had to be separated. But till then, Loth was not only following Abraham, but he was being he was being taught by Abraham how to love God. And no wonder Lot in the Bible is called a righteous man. How did he become righteous? Where from he got to know about God? It was Abraham. It was Abraham who had adopted him as a child and he ensured that he loves God. Even if he goes to another town, he will love God. The father heart of Abraham. Abraham invested everything in his children. He did not wait that Ishmael will be born and Isaac will be born and then I will show my real fatherhood. Then I will start mentoring or then I will, I will parent someone and I will help someone to walk in the walk of God. No! The children that God had given to him in his household, he had already started investing on them. Teaching them how to prepare altars. Teaching them how to worship God. Teaching them the path of righteousness and justice. And justice. So this was before God had said that. But God uses the language, have known him. Now comes the children. When we talk about Ishmael, Ishmael was the first child born to born to. Uh, onto Abraham through Hagar. And what happens with Ishmael? <laughs> that, that is an interesting part. And I'm bringing Ishmael before because I can spend a few minutes on that. And so, so let's, let's see this first. Genesis chapter 21, verse 11, please. Genesis chapter 21, verse 11. And the man was very displeasing in Abraham's sight because of his son. Can you see Abraham's heart? And you remember what is going on with this verse. Over here, Sarah has come to talk to uh, Abraham and say that you, you need to send away this uh, born woman, Hagar, and you have to send away her son, Ishmael. And uh, uh, when, when this when this word comes from Sarah to Abraham, Abraham is displeased. Well, because of whom? Because of his son. So Hagar and his son, Ishmael, were supposed to leave the family and go away because of what Sarah was going through and Isaac were going through. But Bible tells us so clearly that Abraham was displeased because of his son. Abraham, the father, was finding it hard to get separated from his son. Was finding it hard to get separated from his son. 
And you know the most loving part? The moment God sees that man, Abraham loves his son so much, and he is finding it so hard that his son has to live. You know what did God say to him? He goes close to him, and he says, Abraham, I understand. It's okay, but I want to promise this son of yours, this son of yours, because of you, I will bless him. I will make mighty nations to him. And Bible tells us there were 12 nations that were made through Ishmael. All because of the love that Abraham had for his son. For his son. I do not know if there is any father here who misses their children because they are not with you. For any reason, I don't want to go into that things. For any reason, if your son, if your daughter is not with you, I want to tell you, God knows that. God sees that pain. God sees how hard it is for you to be separated from your children. For whatever reason. For whatever reason. And the way God promised Abraham, Abraham, I see your heart. And because of you, I will bless Ishmael. And he did bless Ishmael. And that promise is for you and for me also. If there is any father who is in pain, who is displaced because you are separated from your children, the promise of God is because of you, he will bless your child. Whatever distance he is in, or she is, he will surely bless them. Because of the love, the fatherly love that you have for your children. That's what he did with Abraham. Now there is one interesting part in this, uh, in this passage. Uh, so there are there are two two moments, you know. So Hagar is pregnant. Uh, uh, Sarah has asked Abraham to sleep with Hagar. So Hagar is pregnant. And when Hagar is pregnant, she starts misbehaving with Sarah, okay? And because she is misbehaving with Sarah, Sarah is offended. And Sarah uh, goes and complains to her husband, uh, Abraham. You know what? This girl, she is, she is a servant. And, and it was me who had allowed her this privilege. And now, because she is pregnant and I'm a married lady, she is misbehaving with me. And that's not fair. So Abraham says, well, uh, she is your maid, she is your servant, you take the decision, whatever decision you have to take, you can do it. And Bible tells us, she started, you know, troubling her, torturing her. The torture went to such an extent that Hagar got frustrated and she decided, I'm going to leave this place. So she leaves the place and goes to the desert. And she is in desert. And she is, while being in desert, the angel of God visits her. And the angel of God starts to speak speak her. <laughs> An angel of God asks us, well, what are you doing, Hagar, here? Where have you come from? Oh, this, this lady, this, this, uh, this boss of mine, okay, in, in today's language, this boss of mine, she has been torturing me. She has, she is so hard on me. She is persecuting me, today's language. She is persecuting me, and I'm depressed, and I'm anxious. And what are the words that we use nowadays? Uh, anxious, depressed, uh, mentally challenged, uh, you know what, Lord? Oh, this lady, she's she's behaving with me like this. This boss of mine, she's doing everything, and I'm frustrated. And so I have come out of that house. I don't want to stay with her anymore. You'll be surprised. So God is intervening in this situation, okay? And I just love this part. God, God speaks to her. Hey, God. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> hey, is it all right now? <laughs> Thank you. Hey, you know what? What you should do in this given situation? I know, Lord. The only option is leave. And see, she is horrible. You do not know her. Mm. I hear you. That, that's the language that we use. I hear you. 
have learned this sentence in, in New Zealand. I never used this sentence in, back in India. Because my mind is, I will translate what I speak in Hindi in English, and we don't have such sentence in Hindi. Why do you want to hear? I, 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 said, I know you are, but that's how we speak. So, God is saying, I hear you. That's such a sweet way. You know what? Something should be done to solve this situation. What are you meaning to say? What are you up to? Well, go back to your post. What? No way! You do not know who she is and what she has been saying and what she has been doing. I'm pregnant with this many number of months and she's behaving with me like this. Take a heart. Just go back to her. Take a face. This is not me. This is what the Bible says. This is what the Bible says. I'm, I'm sorry if some people are getting challenged, but this is what the Bible says. I don't know why the Bible says so. Hello? <laughs> I wonder in the New Testament, Jesus goes on to say, if you follow me, you will be persecuted. Come on, Lord. The evangelist had told me if I receive Jesus in my life, everything will be like butter. Smooth. Let's face the reality. God intervened and helped a God to understand go back. And when she goes back, Abraham is happy. Because he is able to see signs. She suggests, God told me that his name should be Ishmael. Really, Abraham? Did God visit you? Yes! God spoke to me. Actually, he was the one who asked me to come here. Otherwise, I wasn't interested. But I have come and I'm doing it only in obedience. Only in obedience. Go. And she gives birth to this baby and he loves him. He loves him. Why do I say he loves him? Why do I say that God could see that he has taught him to walk in the way of the Lord? Why do I say so? Because this boy, almost when he is a young chap, Abraham asks him, or rather tells him, son, you need to get circumcised. What? At this age? Why now? God told me. And he was so well discipled by his dad that whatever his dad asked him, he submitted. Abraham did teach. See, it's, it's so easy to read that Abraham got uh, Ishmael uh, circumcised. And we can easily visualize and Oh, yeah, Ishmael, you're going to enjoy. Well, good. It, it feels good. Yeah, that wasn't so. But he submitted. He, you are getting me, right? He submitted to the commandment of his dad. He did everything, whatever it will cost, because his father is asking. Now, this is the first part of the story, okay? I mean, I have broken this. The second part is, now, he is almost 14 years old and uh, Isaac is born and when Isaac is born one day what does Sarah see? Sarah sees that Ishmael is mocking Isaac and when she sees that her mother heart you know she is broken oh, what's going on? what is Ishmael doing? this is not fair and so she goes to Abraham and she tells Abraham, you know what, this born lady and her son, they need to leave our house now. But why? What's gone wrong? Oh, this boy has started mocking him for the way he is born. He's mocking him and that's not good. Now, Abraham is in problem. Abraham says to her, do we really need to do that? And she is forcing him. All girls will know how to speak to their husband. When they want to get things done. No, you need to purchase the red dress. <laughs> but I thought, no. <laughs> Anyways, so Abraham gets to hear that. Now, we had read the word. When he hears that from Sarah, he's, he's, he's already thinking, I will lose my son. 
they will be separated from me. And interestingly, what happens now is God again intervenes. He had intervened before. Now again God is intervening. But surprisingly, God is telling Abraham, Sir, now, now it's okay. <laughs> Son, Sean, you need to listen to Bash. <laughs> no. <laughs> Abraham, listen to your wife. Listen to your wife. The same God who had asked Hagar to come back to this family is now intervening so that this lady can be sent out. Same God who had asked Hagar to come in so that Ishmael could be born here now is asking Abraham to act in such a way that Hagar and Ishmael will be sent away. Hmm. Interesting, isn't it? Okay. Let me help you what is going on here. Let's see one verse then. If you if you can come to Genesis chapter twenty two verse two, please. Genesis chapter twenty two verse two. Lovely. Then he said, So this is God speaking to Abraham, okay? And they are on the mount and he is ready to sacrifice Isaac. Then he, uh, uh, he is asking him to uh, sacrifice Isaac. So he says, take now your son. And then what does he say? God, have your record gone wrong? Or oh, maybe it was raining in heaven. But you know what? Ishmael was Abraham's son. And this is God speaking. What does God say? You are now take your son, your only son, Isaac. For a person like me who reads that verse, I will immediately say, God, he had two sons. But you are calling Isaac his only son. You know what, my dear brothers and sisters? When God had asked Abraham to release Hagar and Ishmael, he started working on Abraham now for the big promise that was coming up in the next few years. To work on that, he had to ask to Hagar and Ishmael to leave. And when they left, now complete love is coming and Abraham is getting time to know that this is my promised son. Dear brothers and sisters, there are certain things that God will do in your life and in my life which can sound tough on the basis of the worldly knowledge, but God is up to something special. God is working on the plans and purposes that are for your life. And certain times to get those plans and purposes done, you and I have to go through certain tough situations, decisions. That's what was happening to Abraham. And he got enough time to know that Isaac is the son given in promise. And therefore he could use the language, your only son. Fathers, know that God has beautiful plans and purposes for each one of us. And to get those plans and purposes accomplished, he will make you and go and you and me go through stages which can be tough. Which can be tough. Now, did that mean that thereafter he had no relationship with Ishmael? No, don't take it wrong. No, no, no. The Bible tells us when Abraham died. When Abraham died at, at the age of 100, almost 75, or 75, who buried him? Ishmael and Isaac. They both buried him. So Ishmael still had that relationship with his father, but he was supposed to live at that time. And we all know the love of Abraham for Isaac. Do we really know? 
Well, Abraham was the one who was wanting to kill Isaac. How much he loved him. What father, which father is here, he will kill his son. Is there any father here who will take a knife and now you go. Let's play. Killing, killing. God! Do we do that? <laughs> oh, and we are saying Abraham loved Isaac. But that's the truth. It was in his faith that my God will resurrect him. My God will resurrect him. He had that strong faith. And he ensured that Isaac leaves the best life. I, I like the way it is written. Because when Abraham was about to die, what did he do? He gave everything to Isaac. He gave everything to Isaac. Every, every property was given to Isaac. Because Abraham, other than Ishmael and Isaac, he had another six children. When Sarah died and then Isaac was married, after that he married and then he had another six children. But to these six plus Ishmael, he gave gifts. He gave gifts, but he gave entire property to whom? To Isaac. Because he knew that Isaac has come from God. It was not in my strength, but it was he who gave his boy to us. And he loved him, he cared for him. He was always for him. Fathers, that's what I want in this congregation. If, if, you, if you see me, if you see me as someone who is walking with you, I just want to encourage you that we, we need to parent our children. And when I say our children, I don't mean our biological children only, but every child that we have, we have here. You know, for your, for your kind information, I, I just want to let you know something. I've got list of kids, list of the kids who, who, who are who are here, who are here, whom, whom God has given to you and me, because He trusts us. He trusts that this family will take care of this child, and therefore He is bringing children and families from north, south, east, and west. He is bringing here with a purpose. He is not bringing here just so that they can grow and they can have some fun and they can... No, 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 no. Don't take it wrong. The truth is, He is trusting you and me that you and I will parent this many children at least on this date. And if we are faithful in this many, He will multiply this to so many. But let us be faithful in less so that we will be found faithful for big. Am I with you? Am I with you? We need to take care of children. We need to love our children. We need to stand for our children. The children that we have right now in, 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 uh, with, with, with our Sunday school teachers, they are there, but we need to be for them. And, and I was just thinking, and I was just thinking, what, what, can, what as, a, as a father, what can I do? Well, I've been saying this, but what can I do? You know what? There is a first step that I can take. First step that I can take. If, if you guys are with me on board with this thinking, let me dare, let me dare to say this. That I'm gonna, I'm gonna commit my next 30 days to pray for one child. I'm gonna commit my next 30 days to pray for one child. Not my child, children. I of course pray for them. But I wanna commit intentionally that I'm gonna pray for this child daily for one month. Let us not commit who oh, one year and then we do nothing. Thirty days. What is today's day? Third fourth of August. Benjamin no. Benjamin is it fourth? Oh, so fourth of August to oh, this is fourth of September. We are already in September. What does comes after September? October. So from 4th of, 4th of September to 4th of October, I'm going to pray for one child in the church daily. And if God puts in my heart, 
I will give a call to his spirit and say, would you mind me speaking to them? Because God has put some words for him. Words of encouragement. Every Sunday, if I see him in the church, I'm going to make a point that I will go and talk to him and just ask, how has your week been? How are you doing, son? Is, is everything okay? Is there anything that I, you want me to pray for? And I'm going to take that and I can pray for that. But I'm going to commit my one month for one child. Are you with me? Are you with me? Yes. Do we really want to develop family culture over here? Yes. Are you sure? Are you sure? Yes. yes. You know, no, no, no. No, hold on. If, if you give me feedback, that helps me to take next step. Because I'm going to put you in problem. I'm going to put you in problem. Are you with me? Yes. yes. So if you are the one who want to commit, like what I'm committing, that you want to pray for a child for one month, please raise your hand. You're, you're in problem because everyone is watching you. And <laughs> so I'm watching you. Who is there who is not raising their hand? <laughs> for everyone, men and women, everyone, everyone. You will have to keep your hands raised. And if you can please stand. I really appreciate your coming. I really appreciate your coming. You, you understand what I'm trying to say. We are going to pray for that child. Even if we do not get to meet that child, that's okay. But we are going to pray for that child each day for 30 days. And if God encourages you to, to pray ahead, please do that. But for 30 days we are going to do that, okay? And so, I do not know which child name you are going to get. Okay? So Lord, Lord, these are the children that you have given to us. And there are a few more children over here, which probably they have not written the names here, God. But Lord, here are these few who are committing themselves. Because Father, we want to learn from you. We just do not want to be the hearers of the word, but we want to be the doers of the word. And we want to see this place changed. We want to see Wangoli change. We want to see New Zealand change. And Father, let that change begin from me. From me, God. Change me. Change us. Change this family so that this entire country gets a model how to change. Work among us, Heavenly Father. And Holy Spirit, please allow us to pick the child whom you want us to pray for. Each one of us. So we just hand it over in your hands. And, and we seek your guidance for that. Jesus, I'm going to just one, two, three, four, five, six, and so. So probably I do not know uh, if, if the chips will be enough, uh, and I'm not sure if I have included all the children. But and also when you pick the chip, you may see and there is every possibility that you may not know the child because of the culture of our church. We do not know our own children. It's okay. It's okay. Let us begin that we will know the children hereafter. So if you do not know the child, you can please contact me and I will take you to the child, to the parents, so that you can start praying for that child. Okay? And uh, if in case there is any child uh, whom, you, whom you know, and if you want to just check whether that name is not included or included, please come to me because I can do that again. I will, I will take a few more names and make a few more checks and give those some more people. Uh, just pick one chip and you can see the names and yeah. Thanks for your Whoever has got the chip you can take this one. So if in case we are short of chips, what I'm gonna request is if you are a couple, I'm gonna ask have one chip for you two and give one for Thank you. 
is that was that okay with you? Do you think you are going in the right direction? I just thought we need to start somewhere, and uh, the best beginning would be to pray, to be concerned, to love them. Uh, yeah. I wonder if there are couples who have different chips that they mind sharing that with. take part in this Lord, that your name be glorified through it and every person that's taken one of these slips of paper it doesn't matter whether we know the name or not but that's that's in your hands Lord. so Lord we, we do it to commit ourselves to you in the work we do for that child Give us the grace that you have given so many others that we may follow the example of many others today. And we put our trust in you. Amen.